Australia's Snowy Mountains region has always been part of the Australian identity. Its beauty has inspired poets and artists. But its rugged landscape and volatile climate was a true test for our early pioneers. Yet for all the challenges imposed by the Snowy Mountains, what they give back is invaluable. They provide a home for unique wildlife, a winter playground for people from all around the world, and water for clean, renewable electricity. Australia, you know, boasts every kind of climate, and boy, isn't this stunning. Amazingly, though, this snow will eventually find its way westwards to farmland that produces a massive amount of Australia's agriculture. But up here, things are changing. And it's these changes that climatologists are taking as a very serious and ominous threat. Winter temperatures in the mountains are rising. And in the last 50 years, snowfall has been steadily declining. Depleted inflows from the spring snowmelt has put tremendous pressure on the snowy scheme and our farming communities. Some storm fronts are naturally inefficient at producing precipitation. But what if we could generate more snow from these clouds as they pass over the mountain range? Many of these clouds contain large amounts of minute water droplets that can actually remain liquid at temperatures below zero. In 1946, two scientists in the United States discovered a way to make these water droplets freeze. And this was the beginning of cloud seeding. For over 50 years, cloud seeding has been extensively used around the world and in Australia to increase snowfall and augment water supplies. It's tested, proven, and environmentally responsible. And now scientists are confident that cloud seeding can be used to increase natural snowfalls over the Snowy Mountains. And so, in a carefully designed experiment, Snowy Hydro has taken up the challenge. There are a huge number of environmental controls and measures. And Snowy Hydro scientists monitor weather systems approaching the mountains to identify clouds that are suitable for seeding. Clouds that contain large amounts of supercooled liquid water. These particular clouds are naturally inefficient, but the excess water in these clouds can be made to fall as snow by introducing tiny particles for the water to freeze onto. A network of generator sites arranged along the western side of the mountain range burns minute amounts of silver iodide solution to create artificial ice forming particles which are swept up in the passing clouds. Invisible to the naked eye, each silver iodide crystal is so small that more than 300 million of them would fit on the head of a pin. When the supercooled water droplets come into contact with the tiny silver iodide crystals, they freeze, forming the very beginning of a snowflake. As the snowflakes continue to grow, they become too large to remain in the cloud and fall to the ground. And the result is this pristine snow, blanketing the Snowy Mountains. Snowy Hydro's cloud seeding project targets the supercooled liquid water contained within the cold front. Now this water would usually evaporate when it hits the warmer air as it descends on the eastern side of the range. This is a well-known, naturally occurring phenomenon, often referred to as a rain shadow. Now of course, a program of this scale with its location being within the Kosciuszko National Park, must have stringent environmental monitoring and protection measures in place. 
Before the project even commenced, an independent expert panel thoroughly investigated the proposal and determined that cloud seeding would be unlikely to have any significant adverse environmental impacts. In cooperation with Snowy Hydro, stakeholders such as the Department of Environment and Climate Change produced valuable advice on the development of the environmental management plan for the project. Snowy Hydro monitors for potential changes to aquatic and terrestrial ecology and conducts extensive environmental sampling. These measurements are reported to the government and increases in snow precipitation are being assessed using both conventional statistical methods and advanced ultra-trace chemical analysis techniques. This will help determine the effectiveness of the program. Um, well, so far we've had really good indication that we're having a positive effect with cloud seeding. Um, we take snow chemistry measurements um, after each major campaign um, and in those we're, we look at the seeding signature and we're seeing that cloud seeding is having a positive effect. Well, environmental protection is um, it's a major part of the project and it's, um, it's tied very closely with um, what the, the project is about. Southeastern Australia is facing a water emergency. This is so serious that the New South Wales Government is convinced the program must be considered as part of our water management strategy. So, as a result, they've given approval to expand the existing target area by around a thousand square kilometres and extend the duration of the trial until 2014. But stakeholders are already calling for further expansion to include all of the Australian Alps. The federal government has also put its strong support behind the project, providing $4 million in research funding in addition to the 36 million Snowy Hydro will spend on the project. The expanded program is going to be great news for us because if there is any benefits that are going to be seen from this cloud seeding trial, we're now going to be incorporated in that program and we're going to see the benefits too. I think anything to increase the snowfalls is obviously positive, especially you know, there, there, there is a concern about climate change, so enhancing any, any of the natural snow qualities. And also, I mean, the New South Wales ski industry is worth about a billion dollars to the state's economy, particularly, uh, and most of that billion dollars is coming out of the local area. Well, the best outcome would be is if the trial is successfully completed and uh, no significant environmental effects are recorded and cloud seeding is allowed to be implemented over the national park benefiting the ski resorts. But the benefits are far reaching. Increased flows to the Murray and Murrumbidgee irrigation systems will benefit downstream communities. This provides at least a hope of a positive increase to the water to the catchment. Our area is just based on agriculture. It would not exist without water. So we need to have that security. We need to make sure that that high security water will be available for all our permanent plantings. Without that, you will find the area will just wither on the vine, so to speak. Uh, anywhere snow is currently falling in this country and there's an area much larger than what Snowy Hydro are permitted to use, I would suggest that we shouldn't be excluding any of those areas. So it would be, be my wish and uh, my members wish, I'm sure, that that governments don't restrict Snowy Hydro and the sooner we can get out of a trial phase and get into a practical long-term business phase of running uh, cloud seeing, the sooner we'll start seeing better evidence of the, of the success and, and, and the improvement in water storages. Helping this natural process of snow has many benefits. It can improve the declining snowpack the local economy thrives. The Snowy Mountain Scheme uses the melting snow to generate clean, renewable energy. And the water, which was once snow, is finally sent west into the Murray and Murrumbidgee rivers for irrigation. This isn't science fiction. This is fact. And it's happening now. Cloud seeding offers an opportunity to offset the declining inflows in the mountains 
and in our irrigated regions too. Scientists are confident of its success and so too it would seem is the New South Wales government giving its tick of approval to expand and extend the program. If you want more information about Snowy Hydro's cloud seeding program, visit the website at snowyhydro.com.au. Through research and practical scientific investigation, Snowy Hydro is bringing new life and innovation to a proven technology for the benefit of all stakeholders and the unique environment of the Snowy Mountains. I'm Steve Liebman. Thanks for joining us.